Binge or Bin from Independent TV, giving you the lowdown on which TV shows are binge-worthy and which ones are bin-worthy. This week, we've been watching Under the Banner of Heaven on Star and Disney+, and BBC Two drama Maryland. And we'll introduce you to our pick of hidden gems we think you should be watching. Hi hey Annabelle, how are you doing? Good, survived the heat wave, how are you? Yes, yeah I know, it was good to actually hold up indoors and watch some TV. Yeah, so let's dig in, what have you been watching? I've been watching a new mini-series called Under the Banner of Heaven, created, written by Dustin Lance Black, based on a non-fiction book of the same name by um, John Cracker, and it tells the story of a murder committed seemingly in the name of God by someone who had a fundamental belief in Mormonism. The show follows two detectives um, who grapple with their religion as they're investigating the, the, the horrible murder. Uh, the detectives being played by um, Gil Birmingham from Hello High Water, and Andrew Garfield, who has been very busy lately, uh, starring in all kinds of uh, films in across varying genres. You had Tick, Tick, Boom, you had Spider-Man, No Way Home, and of course you have The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I'm not trying to say he, he was miscast in this one, but I feel like in Under the Banner of Heaven, I might have enjoyed it a bit more had someone else been in the role. Again, I'm not a casting director, I can't tell you who right now, but it's not his finest work, is what I'm trying to say. Heavenly Father, we ask that we might be instruments in thy hand to fix what we find broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The thing about the Banner of Heaven is it's there's a lot of dramas based on true crime and I think this one kind of flies under the radar because of its over-reliance on flashbacks. Now, I love a flashback, I always say this, but I love Lost. Lost was all about the flashbacks, obviously. But it really served to kind of develop characterization. Whereas this one, it, it, it definitely detracts from the present timeline of what you're watching. You kind of want to just get to get back to the investigation. I did find it a bit of a slog, but I'm being quite picky because there's a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah, I guess the bar for the crime dramas is so high right now that anything that, like, is it all boring just doesn't just doesn't make it. I know you were a big fan of it, as was I. Mayor of Easttown was so great. It was like, you know, kind of one of the the best dramas, uh, crime dramas we've seen in a long time. But I was just wanting a bit more from it. Is it a binge or a bin? I, I you know, we've got to be quite, I think you've got to be quite striking of your opinions here because like you say, we're a, we're a recommend, the TV recommending show and I don't want people to watch something that is in my opinion, below par, and I think under the, under the banner of heaven is. So for me, I'm going to brutally say it's a bin, and I feel terrible about oh, it. Sh- <laughs> I feel terrible about it. Hands up right now! This goes beyond just a murder. Beyond everything I believe. I've been watching Maryland, which is a BBC TV adaptation of this play that was staged um, at the Royal Court Theatre last year by Lucy Kirkwood. Kirkwood wrote it as a response to the murders of uh, Sarah Everard and Sabina Nessa. It focuses on the stories of two women, both called Mary, who meet at the police station where they've gone to report different uh, experiences of sexual assault. And it's there that they are kind of treated very indifferently and patronizingly and kind of in all the ways that is the sad truth for uh, people who come forward with uh, experience of sexual assault. The film version stars Zowie Ashton, who uh, people will probably recognize from her early roles like Fresh Meat, um, and since then she's kind of gone on to star in The Handmaid's Tale. And the other Mary is played by Hayley Squires, who had her breakout role in 2016 with the film I, Daniel Blake. She had the lead role in the series Adult Material, and both of them are just amazing in 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 these roles um and so you as you'd suspect uh it's pretty harrowing subject matter i'm mary i'm mary too when it was staged it was just hugely arresting and the the production was kind of so spontaneous and that um the actors like read it with the script in hand and there was definitely this sense of urgency around the message And I feel like that has definitely not been lost in the TV adaptation, probably because they've kept it to that same duration. It's 30 minutes, super short um, and really more powerful for it. There's definitely a conscious decision not to show those 
violent scenes, but it's still extremely like upsetting to watch and everything that follows is equally um, upsetting as well. So I would say even though those scenes aren't like put to screen as we've seen them before, I, I definitely caution someone before recommending this. Um, so yeah, it feels weird to call this a binge, but it was really powerful. Yeah, as you said, I'm sure it, it you know it goes beyond binge or binning when it's a show about such a serious subject matter. Um, but is it a strong recommend? Is it a binge or, or, or a bin for you? Yeah, as weird as it is to use the word binge, it is um, definitely worth watching. I think the people, including myself, who didn't get the chance to see the original uh, piece of theatre, this is just another chance to watch something um, that feels really pertinent. Hey, uh, did someone examine you when you made the report? No. Can we talk about some hidden gems? Yes, let's cool. do it. I love this part. We get to talk about the shows. We have a secret obsession with maybe that, you know, might have flown under the radar. My, in my case, this was on years ago and it was Taken, um, which was a 2002 show um, produced by Steven Spielberg uh, and written by a guy called Leslie Boehm. Uh, frustratingly, Taken's actually been taken off Prime Video, but do look out for it on streaming services soon where it does invariably crop up from time to time. When this came out, I was very young. It was one of the first shows that I kind of watched religiously uh, that was a series from start to end. As a film loving youngster, I saw these names. I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll give this a watch. Um, and as, a, as an entrance into television, it was quite a fun one. People have been taken from their homes. Things have been done to them. This could be the greatest threat the world has ever known. It features three families uh, and their experiences uh, in regards to basically what they think is the discovery of aliens in Roswell in the 1940s. Uh, one family seeks to cover up uh, the, alien, the arrival of the aliens as a conspiracy. One family uh, are actually abducted, have a history of being abducted by the aliens and used for uh, as, as experiments for the aliens, which sounds so ridiculous, but it's actually really harrowing when the way it's depicted on screen. And another family has a much nicer experience of aliens where they um, where they befriend one, and in the case of this family, actually fall in love with one, uh, and then ultimately want to protect uh, the new arrival. It did at the time start. Uh, Dakota Fanning when she was eight years old. So she, she was very young in this, but she played, she's so good in it. She's so great. No wonder she went on, she's gone on to have a, you know, quite an interesting career. And it's got that Spielberg appeal, you know? Like if you, I love Close Encounters of the Third Kind, one of my favorite Spielberg films. And it's got that kind of vibe running all the way through it. And as a young horror fan, watching horror far before he should have been, that kind of blew my mind as well. No! So my hidden gem this week is My Brilliant Friend, which I feel like it's really appropriate that I'm recommending now, post heat wave, because it is really just the most beautiful summertime set show that you could ask for. It's an HBO series which began in 2018 with its first season, um, and since then there have been two more to follow. It's a coming of age drama um, that's an adaptation of a series of books uh, by Eleanor Ferrante, which are hugely popular and I definitely recommend reading if you haven't already. And so the books and the series kind of follow the lives of these two little girls, uh, Leela and Lenu, as they get older and their friendship becomes kind of fraught and divided and just more intense. It's one of those shows that feels really lived in and it, yeah, it just feels very high budget, but at the same time, really intimate, like all of the detail, it's so detail oriented. So the books have been adapted by uh, Jennifer Schur and Paolo Sorrentino, whose previous credits include um, Big Love and Paolo Sorrentino did um, The Young Pope and he also famously did The Hand of God last year. It's like that sun-drenched kind of hot, humid TV. But it's definitely something that I would recommend watching um, in the summer. So you've got a few more months to go. And yeah, I think it, it, it stays really faithful to the spirit of the book and it makes sense that Ellen Frante is one of four credited uh, writers as well. Um, so yeah, it just feels, even if you haven't read the book, you'll enjoy it regardless. Thanks for joining us on Binge or Bin. 
Uh, more than enough to keep you going until we see you again next time. Like and comment below and subscribe for more from Independent TV. Thank you.